The 21st century has witnessed dramatic shifts in how people pay for goods and services with electronic payments increasingly displacing cash and more recently cryptocurrency and even digital currencies emerging as alternatives to traditional conceptions of money. But is that the same situation in Africa? Or is cash still king on the continent of over 1.3 billion people? Africa has kept pace with and in some cases even led the innovation and an influx of new investments and regulatory shifts continue to shape the e-payments landscape on the continent. Cash's supremacy is being challenged as e-payments gain momentum and with banks and non-bank players in Africa alike innovating to reduce friction in domestic and cross-border payments and deliver much-needed new solutions to consumers and businesses, Africa's domestic e-payments market is expected to see revenues grow by 20% per year, reaching around $40 billion by 2025, compared with about $200 billion in Latin America. And of course, the comparisons continue. Global payments revenue is projected to grow at 7% annually over the same period. Joining me now is Ademola Okuleye. He's the Senior Sales Director for Cellulent Nigeria. And Cellulent is a leading Pan-African payments company that provides locally relevant and alternative payment methods for global, regional, and local merchants. Ademola, welcome to Business Edge. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much, Tudo, and um, I'm glad to be here this morning. So when we want to have this conversation about the future of the payment processing system, it's also necessary we sort of establish where we're coming from. And I think the biggest thing is this dominance that we see of cash. Is it still king here on the continent? Um, is it a dominant factor or does it continue to hold the throne? Okay. Um, cash is still widely uh, used on the African continent, but gradually it's losing its dominance as digital payment becomes more widespread. Um, we can, if we use Nigeria, for example, in the recent past, um, Central Bank introduced um, a cashless policy, which restricted um, payments to certain amounts. This has led to a significant increase in uh, the adoption of digital payments. Uh, while we, we witnessed some teething problems over the last uh, few months um, post the policy, we can see that cash is gradually becoming less relevant in certain sectors of the economy. And um, in markets like Nigeria, settlement is playing a major role in providing digital payment options for businesses across the country. We have uh, merchants that have uh, outlets in almost all the 36 states that were acquiring their payments. And this has made it easier for them to adopt and actually transition into the cashless uh, uh, period. Okay. Um, it's safe to say that um, cash is no longer the king and there's a new sheriff in town, which is uh, digital payments. And, and that's really interesting to see. So I'll follow up by asking you in terms of some of the factors that are driving this shift away from cash. Because yes, some would say it's just the natural innovations and technologies that have come, but there are a few other things that are playing in this field that are pushing people away from holding cash or wanting to constantly use cash in terms of payments for businesses and services and things like that. So what are these factors? Okay, um, COVID-19 played a major role in the shift uh, from cash to digital payment. Of course, there was the hygiene concern during COVID. Um, we've also seen a significant increase in terms of um, mobile phones and mobile internet penetration in Africa. Uh, we also see that cash uh, transaction processing time is actually longer and unattractive. So you're a merchant, a customer comes to your store, makes payment by cash, you have to count the cash, you have to record the cash, you have to go to the bank to process and um, deposit that payment. While you have digital payment option where if you have a bank transfer or a card payment, that hits your account immediately. So you don't have issues such as security concerns. You don't have to keep manual records. It's all digitized. And also we've seen um, government policies and regulations that are promoting financial inclusion and also the adoption of digital payments. So these factors have, um, have major determinants that are driving um, people away from using cash. So when we look at the impact of this, uh, a cash no longer being king but still being a dominant factor, these trends and factors also pushing people away from cash. What yeah. then impact, what's the direct impact that it's having on the industry you play in? And that's, of course, the payment uh, processing industry. How is all of that leading to some of the things we're seeing now in this industry? 
Okay, so one thing about uh, digital payment. Digital payments, it studies have shown that societies that have high adoption rates of uh, digital payments have lower crime rates because once there's no cash, there's no worry. As a merchant, if you are not really, if your, your digital payment is like 90% of your payment, you have, you'd be clearly unattractive to uh, robberies and robbers. Then also, it's also, as over a period of time, discouraged money laundering because the source of funds are easily identifiable. And it, of course, it's also uh, is helping government in terms of improving the tax net, because once you make payments, uh, you can't hide your income or evade tax. And it's also, like I mentioned earlier, to reduce the cost of cash management, and it's, it's also improved international payments. Gone are the days when, as a tourist or a trader, you have to carry a lot of cash when you're traveling out of the country. Now all you need is a debit or credit card, and you can make payments both offline and online without actually going through any hassles. So the impact has been quite significant to the payment industry. So when it comes to the innovations and the things that we see, in some cases we've seen that Africa uh, has actually been leading the way in the innovations and the, and the processing uh, payments industry. So let's talk about some of these innovations now that are changing the way payments are made here on the continent. We've come from a time where it was people that was somewhere used to be made payments, then calories, then gold, into this cash um, a situation and cash has dominated for a number of years now but now we're seeing that dominance as you said being challenged what are the changes what are the innovations that the payment processing uh industry is bringing and seeing here on the continent okay um the biggest example i can give is uh, the growth of mpesa uh that's a mobile payment company based in uh, kenya this has completely turned around kenya's economy it's removed the total dependency of, on cash from making payments you can make payments for goods and services using M-Pesa. Um, and companies like Cellular, who are powering digital payments by card, bank transfer, USSD, QR codes across 35 African countries, which has made business across these African countries easier both for online and offline digital uh, payment methods. Then we'll look at companies like Nala. Uh, they've improved um, and assisted African diaspora from sending funds digitally into the continent without using third parties, which has reduced the cost of making those payments and, of course, has increased the ease of making the payment and also efficiency. Then we're seeing a lot of companies coming up and inventing digital solutions to everyday life, from e-insurance uh, to ride hailing to online marketplace. So Africa has been very innovative in terms of um, meeting the needs of an ever-changing consumer base. Okay, so I want to follow up with the M-Pesa um, example you've used, because even with that, in many rankings, Kenya tops, or in the top three, top five, when it comes to digital and e-payments. What is it in the M-Pesa sort of situation that a country like Nigeria can learn? Because Kenya is the, third, is the largest economy in East Africa, Nigeria being the largest economy on the continent. You would have thought that you'd seen some of these innovations uh, Ahead of time, with Nigeria being that there's such a very wide customer base, there's financial inclusion to be considered as well. So in terms of the M-Pesa situation, what are the lessons there that other African economies can learn to scale themselves up when it comes to these process, uh, these payment processing situations? Okay, top most there will be government regulation. Um, clearly, the, uh, the bank of the Central Bank of Kenya has been a major driver in uh, adoption of digital payments in Kenya. And that has led to the population adopting this payment. So it's not, you have to be consistent. I know Nigeria, we started cashless 12 years ago, but mm -hmm. it's still not uh, as, um, as impactful as we have seen in East African, um, in the East African country, especially in Kenya. So government regulation and support is very key. Then of course, there's the infrastructure. There's the enabling environment and infrastructure for the growth of digital payments in Kenya, which I know we're getting there in Nigeria, but we need to uh, invest a lot in infrastructure. Digital uh, internet penetration is also key. We have situations where in Nigeria, it's mainly the state capitals that you would have um, an improved service in terms of uh, uh, internet penetration. So once these things are in place, it will also drive the Nigerian economy. And I, I, I can tell you in terms of future revenues. Nigeria, you mentioned the growth rate being 20%. Mm -hmm. 
Nigeria is currently growing at 35 percent so we are on the right track and I'm sure in a, in a matter of years we would be definitely be ahead of Kenya in terms of digital payments okay so it's a good thing we're talking growth now because what the research is also showing us is that unfortunately the growth of the e-payments market is going to be uneven across the continent so uh, Ademola let's talk about the issues and challenges that will factor into how fast this market grows in different countries so you've already uh, made a prediction here putting Nigeria ahead of Kenya in the next few years but when we look at some of the challenges we experience even looking at the regulation aspect you brought into the conversation with how uh, Kenya was able to grow in pay so let's look at these issues and challenges and let's look at maybe the frontier countries that you think will be leading the way when it comes to the uh, payment processing industry here on the continent. Okay, in terms of um, the major countries that are, there are five major countries that will lead in terms of um, uh, digital payments in Africa. Um, there's Nigeria, there's Kenya, there's Ghana, there's South Africa, and, there's, and then there's Egypt. Now, these countries, these five countries, uh, they constitute over 80% of digital markets in Africa. Um, for in terms of growth, definitely the key things that are going for this market is that there's a rising ownership of smartphones. Um, data cost is gradually becoming affordable and the internet bandwidth is increasing. Then, of course, there's the urbanizing population and a very, very bulging use demographic, which is drive, which is key to the growth of digital payments across the world. And we have a very uh, high growth rate in terms of population. It's 2.4 as against the global rate of 1%. Mm. So in terms of the, the growth we see in those five countries, those are the five countries that are driving internet and, sorry, digital payments in Africa. Okay, so on average, there's only about 5 to 7% of all payment transactions on the continent that are made via electronic or digital channels, compared with 50% in a country such as Turkey, for instance. So we see that there's obviously and very clearly room for growth. So let's talk about the opportunities here now. Where do we see the opportunities? What kind of innovations and technology should we be expecting from the industry in the coming years? Where are the opportunities for people to enter, to invest, and also to make things so much more easier for African consumers across the continent? Okay, um, one thing, like I said, we have going in Africa is we have a very um, large, huge and urban population. So you have a ready-made market for uh, digital payments and not just digital payments you see how people transport each other uh, transport around themselves as e leading uh, services how we consume entertainment streaming services are making a lot of money out of africa now because obviously we have a huge population that's are adopting that then of course e-commerce is a big thing so the opportunities for those three uh, sectors is a great thing in africa then infrastructure investment is clearly key. This is something we cannot run away from. As long as we want that growth, we have to invest. Both local fintechs and international fintechs need to come into the economy and the continent and invest to make this uh, possible. Or then there's, of course, the high uh, rate of mobile penetration and increasing mobile money accounts in Africa. So in, in conclusion, we have the market, the market for uh, growth of digital channels is available in uh, Africa. And it's a matter of time before Africa overtakes Africa. We're not too bothered about that. The, the Turkish example you gave, the, the growth for that to be achieved and surpassed is, is, is here in Africa. And I'm sure in a number of years, we will definitely over, overtake most of these countries in terms of adoption and growth of the digital payment industry. Fantastic. So we've split this conversation into looking at the African situation, but it's a global, it's a globally growing sector. And there are trends that are shaping the global payments uh, processing sector as well. But I'd also be interested in finding out from you, Ademola, in terms of whether those are the same trends we expect to shape the uh, sector here on the continent. Are we following the global trajectory or are there some contextual differences that will make things a little bit uh, different for us here on the continent because of, of course, uh, local situations and context. Yeah, definitely. Um, we, we, there are global trends that uh, Africa has, has, in the last couple of years, been uh, trailblazers in terms of uh, innovations. Because you see, like you say, politics is local, digital payment is also local. 
there's no one size fits all in terms of giving digital solutions. So the major trends that we're seeing is growth in mobile wallets. Of course, a mobile wallet is a digital wallet that allows you to make payments and access your funds using a mobile device. We've seen a significant increase in that. Of the 410 um, mobile wallets created last year, 54% was actually created in Africa. So that shows that we are above, we are above the uh, average trend in terms of mobile wallets. We've also seen an increase in global e-commerce. The growth rate is at 10.4. It's estimated that it's, it's going to be a $6.3 trillion uh, e-commerce um, sales. And we see Africa and African co uh, companies significantly playing in that market. So that's and it is also spurred by the rise of social media, um, mobile commerce, and an increasing popularity in online shopping. As we, as the increase in mobile payments, uh, as we see an increase in mobile payment, we also see the need for security. So we're seeing biometric authentication, which verifies physically and behaviorally verifies who is using uh, that payment. So at least it gives some level of security and trust, which has always been the problem with digital payments in Africa. And of course, there are various online and offline payments that are suited for the uh, African continent. All right, Ademola Okuleye, that's a conversation we'll continue for now. But I just want to ask this question and throw it out there. What do you see would be the biggest challenge? Because we lightly touched on regulation, and we see a situation where regulation from country to country, from economy to economy, can sometimes be the damning factor or can be the factor that also opens up everything. What's the biggest challenge you think that this industry will encounter in the coming years? Well, in terms of regulation, we've seen a shift with um, um, the regulators. There's clearly the need for a legal framework to be developed country by country to encourage digital payments. So the outlook for digital payments is very bright in Africa. Um, the opportunities are vast and we're excited that the role and technology of innovation we play in shaping the industry is huge and is massive. So um, regulation while we still see it as uh, hindering growth, but in the last couple of years, it's been uh, encouraging. If I come to Nigeria, we can see that this uh, cashless uh, policy being driven by the um, Central Bank of Nigeria will definitely increase uh, digital payments. And we, we, we see a very good relationship between regulators and uh, the digital payment industry as we go into the months and years. All right, so we know that sometimes... It's also in, okay. No, go ahead, Ademola. And it's also, in, it's also in, uh, increasing financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. So the more people that are financially literate about digital payments, the better for a cashless uh, society because that is the, that's the main goal. Having a cashless society makes everything easier. And better. And straight and all that Definitely. And we know that the future will eventually become the present. Uh, so we all look forward to a present where uh, cash is no longer king. It also reduces the burden on our governments to continue to print money as well, uh, to retain money. So, so there are so many direct and indirect benefits that we eventually see uh, from this move. Ademola Okulaya, Senior Sales Director for Cellulance Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining me on Business Edge. Thank you very much. And have a nice day. The same to you. And many years ago, this would have been seen as something very, very futuristic. But just one global event, and that is the COVID-19 pandemic, helped uh, the e-payment or the payment processing system and sector to jump many, many years ahead with the demand coming on from online shopping and so many other needs. And in the coming years, we'll see more jumps as this sector and industry grows across the continent, providing uh, employment, bridging the financial inclusion gap, and of course, helping businesses and Africans across the continent to make payments easy and seamlessly. You're watching Business Edge. When we come back, we have international business headlines, and then we'll also be in South Africa, where over 400 businesses have closed their doors in the first quarter of 2023. What's driving what is now an alarming trend? We'll get into that after this.